Oh no! It looks like Chris and Phoebe are both out of sake. For this episode, their mission is to select a convenience store sake and a snack to pair it with. I'm Matt, their mutual friend and a sake novice, and somehow they've convinced me to be the judge and jury for this competition. I love kombini here. There are about 50,000 of them throughout Japan. And they don't just have delicious food and drinks. You can also buy things like bus and train and even plane tickets, and even pay your utility bills. Oh, hi, Matt. I'm surprised to see you taking this phone call. Not in a convenience store. What's wrong? Well, they've actually changed the hours of the convenience store outside of my building. Do you live in Tokyo? I do. That's uh, that's how serious this is. My 24-hour convenience store is now only open like 16 hours a day. Wow. Well, you Are you sure they don't change the hours so like you don't just like you know uh, go wandering <laughs> in? <laughs> She's turning the sign around, being like avoiding you. <laughs> you hide behind the shelves until you've gone. What's the weirdest thing you've ever bought in a convenience store? The weirdest thing? Well, I have bought, a long time ago, I have bought uh, some underwear. I was on a trip and uh, extended my stay. Bought a pair of boxer shorts at the convenience store and some socks as well, I believe. Have you seen the one-day disposable underpants? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, the one-day disposable underpants, yeah, yeah. Just one time. Sake. I bought sake from a Kavini a while ago and I didn't really know what I was doing and it was just a bit of a disaster really. I bought something and I just couldn't drink it so um, I use it in cooking instead which, um, you know, waste not, want not, unlike the disposable underwear. What about you Chris? Like, Well, only a few months ago I probably would have said not to expect miracles when you go and buy sake at a convenience store but I think perhaps to the, with, uh, as a response to all this home drinking that's going on they've really upped their game. They have quite a good selection. All right, so you've each chosen a sake off the list and a snack to pair it with. Let's hear from Chris first. You've got 30 seconds. You ready? I have gone for quite the luxurious pairing. The Daigin Joe from Hakutsuru, one of the top five Goliath sake breweries in Japan. Delivers quite the experience at a super low price. And it's one of the first sake to have a geographical indication. And I have chosen to pair with it canned saba, mackerel. In, wait for it, olive oil. All right, sounds like a pretty interesting sake, but what was that thing you mentioned about the geographical identification or indication? It's called a geographical indication. It's a wine thing. You know, the thing that makes Burgundian wine from Burgundy, at least as far as the label is concerned. Pretty fancy stuff there then, if they're yeah. not set about kind of making it a specialty drink, I it's guess. It's relatively new, uh, but I'm sure a lot of other prefectures will follow suit. What about the taste? I'm curious, could you tell us a little bit about the flavor? Yeah, well, first of all, so this uh, particular type of sake is made with a little bit of added alcohol. They add distilled alcohol, which enhances the aromas, which I think will actually mask some of the fishier aromas and flavors in this dish, although I quite like those. Yeah, so it's got the usual nose that you would expect, a bit of banana, a bit of melon, uh, fruit in there, some rice notes as well. It's not too overpowering. It's not a, you know, a big aroma, but this particular part of Japan, they don't go for big aromas. They, they focus more on the flavor. Lovely, low, loads of savory notes in there that I wouldn't normally expect to get from a Daiginjo, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's really flavorsome, very easy to pair with food, and uh, it's just really, really um, dainty, but packing in a lot of flavors in there. It's really good. Dainty with lots of flavors, but then you've got yeah. mackerel, canned mackerel. I, I think this is more a case of um, earthquake emergency food supplies, but um, anyway. <laughs> Um, and this this is that, uh, what is going on with this dainty sake? This is it, sacrilege. It smells like cat food, okay? But 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 bear with me. It tastes it tastes really good. Um, I'm actually not a massive fan of seafood, um, so you it's hate weird fish that I, was, yeah, I, I hate fish. But this is the exception. I make an exception with mackerel. Itadakimasu. Ah. So juicy and rich. Mm. Oh. Mm. They just 
all the flavors just melt together and it enhances the umami, the savory flavors in the fish. Oh, and it washes it away lovely. I mean, it's not super high acidity, but it still manages to wash away the oiliness at the end. All right, all right. Phoebe, you're up next. Let's hear it. Okay. I have Takashi Mizu from Akita. Wow, first of all, this is a Junmai Daiginjo, high quality. Rice grains being polished to 45%. Normally really expensive. You can buy this for just over 1,400 yen. Crazy. It's using Akita rice and yeast, some very special regional specialities, a bit rarer than other types. And I am pairing it with various forms of chocolate. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. It's becoming more common. I'll take questions later, but I believe the light fruit notes of this and the rice in the sake is going to create one smooth, sweet experience. <laughs> So immediately, you've got the classic daiginjo aromas, you've got sort of banana, melon, but you've got the steamed rice comes after afterwards as well. You've got those kind of notes. Not much of the lactic in there, actually, um, but let's give it a try. I can't believe I bought this in a convenience store. Yeah, they promised this kind of medium to high aroma, but the flavor itself, very much matches that. So you've got these banana, melon, apple pear, this kind of sweetness, and that lingers at the front of your tongue. But there's this this rush of it's medium dry, so not it's not super dry because it's refreshing. It cuts quite quickly here. It's just very well balanced, well rounded. Um, that sweetness of the fruit doesn't become too cloying. Well, it just reminds you that it's worth taking another sip. Why and what kind of chocolate did you go with? Because convenience stores, they're not known for their chocolate either, really, right? Chocolate varieties have really, really expanded in Japan in terms of accessibility and affordability in the places you can buy them. So the other day, completely unrelated to this, I happened to buy some 72% um, Carré de Chocolat chocolates. And this little leaflet was inside the box. Then I opened the leaflet. Oh, look. So I thought, wow, I love sake, I love chocolate. They're basically telling me to do this. I absolutely adore these coconut sugar covered in dark chocolate from Lawson. It's super, super cheap, easy to buy, um, but super delicious, really dark chocolate with this amazing coconut sugar. So given the fruit aromas and notes in here, I'm really excited to see how it pairs. So oh, yeah. I'm gonna put... mm, sorry. I... Mm. I'm supposed to be explaining, but I would seriously date this. Oh my God, yeah. Oh. So whilst the, the sugar and chocolate's kind of melting and fizzling on my tongue. Oh my gosh, guys. I basically have a chocolate fruit cocktail in my mouth. I've done that from a convenience store in my room. Oh. I'm feeling a little bit self-satisfied. Okay, so I have to I have to give Chris a little background information though. Phoebe happens to know that I love those coconut dark chocolates. Right. So, that doesn't seem entirely fair. <laughs> no, it doesn't seem entirely fair, does it? I want to interject here because I always buy them and Matt buys the chocolate covered cranberries, actually. So you could argue, as I might, that she chose the safe option here. She she chose uh an interesting Yet yeah, safer option. But Chris has already been talking about chocolate and sake pairing. Yeah, However, um, you have to know what you're doing because it's not a safe option if you choose the wrong kind of sake, which is why I deliberately did not choose a full karakuchi dry sake. Mm. It's true, but fishy dishes aren't necessarily a good match for sake either. You've got to be careful with that fishiness. I know what saba tastes like, but I can't say I've had uh, that particular canned <laughs> convenience store version of it before. I'm feeling that kind of that weird gap between canned fish and what sounds like pretty fancy sake. I'm gonna have to go with Chris this time just because it sounds like a more interesting combination. <laughs> I had to do my research for this, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, that's it for this time. Thanks so much for watching. Remember if you're ever in Tokyo or anywhere in Japan, all you have to do is find a local convenience store to get some good sake and some great snacks. So check it out if you're here. Just hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Take care, and until next time, sip on. Oh.